Hi everybody, welcome to the QB School. I am JT O'Sullivan. Today, a little bit of a unique video. We're gonna go Justin Herbert, wild card playoffs, tough, tough L. But we're only gonna look at what I'm used to calling third downs for four points. So these are critical third down opportunities. If you convert it, it usually ends up being a touchdown. If you don't, you're settling for a field goal. So you're leaving points on the board if you can't convert these ones. Fired up for what I think are the most critical third downs of this game. Let's dive into it. Welcome to the QB School. So before we dive into this video, quick reminder about the Quarterback School Patreon community. If you enjoy the YouTube channel, you will love the Quarterback School Patreon community. Deep, deep dives, usually long format videos trying to create the environment of what it's like in an NFL quarterback room. So if you enjoy how I talk and teach ball, you will love the quarterback school Patreon community. Hop over there, become a member. I appreciate the support. As for this video, let's get into it. All right, Justin Herbert, brutal L. We're going to dive into what I'm used to calling four point third downs. So this is a tough one early on. And when I tell you that I despise this play, I despise this play. And I I'm making some assumptions here that this is spacing. It could be a potential option to Allen, just the way that he reads this thing, but the bones of this thing works out to be spacing. So for me, when I think of spacing, I think of in the field slant, sit over the ball, kind of pivot hitch here with a flat, usually from a check down back here. Now they're a little bit funky in how they get here because they've got the tight end type staying in a block six person protection here, but that's the bones of this. Now, when you get into the red area, you can often run it with a sluggo or just a true fade. Or back in the day when I used to coach high school football, we call it a slade, slant if you want, fade if you can't, those types of things built into the bones of backside spacing. Okay, now the way that Herbert reads this and the reason I'm, I don't think it's true spacing is because this sit over the ball is paired with what looks like his eyes are looking here first. So I'm gonna guess this is an option. If this is an option, it's a little bit of a better play. Okay, I'm not gonna freak out as much on the play design. But the bones of this, when it's all said and done, how they, how they run it, it's spacing. And spacing sucks. And especially when it works out where essentially everybody is double covered that you wanna throw the ball to. So first, let's just watch how this thing plays out to the bottom. He's looking at Allen. Allen sure looks like he's running a choice or option. Could you put it on him right there on the one? Maybe. I mean, really, there's four dudes on him. I mean, maybe you could put it on him. And again, NFL windows, tight, I get it. You put it right there. You know, maybe he catches it and splits this thing. But, man, I don't know. Regardless, this looks like fade. This looks like sit. This looks like pivot hitch. This looks like flat. I hate spacing. This play sucks. We just lost four points because we can't convert on third down in the red area. And we force a contested sit. And again, just look how this thing breaks down coverage-wise. Okay, let's, let's let it play out here. Up top, one-on-one -on, -one on the fade. Don't love throwing fades one-on-one. -on -one. The sit over the ball, you know, at least one, maybe two there at the end. Allen down here to the bottom, the number the third or the number two eligible down here to the bottom. He's got three defenders on him. <laughs> and then the flat, who's not going to score, has one. So one on one, two on one, three on one, one on one. Come on, y'all. This is third and goal from the four, a four point play. When we kick it, we get a field goal, we get three points, but we don't get the seven for the touchdown. I mean, we can't get a better throw than this. I'm not even putting it on Herbert. I'm putting it on the design here as far as just give us a chance. And you can see how Herbert's reading this. If this was true spacing, he would look left first, then back to the sit, then, then back to the pivot. This is looks like more choicey. But again, I mean, a contested sit, damn. Next one here, third and nine. Now, this is a nice one here for a touchdown. We're going to end up hitting the tight end coming across on a little shallow. Love the design, FIB. Love the opportunity here to get a little chip on the edge. Watch 44, take the edge off. Nice job from Herbert standing in there, delivering the ball. Now, it's not past the sticks, which is fine. 
but the the bones of this thing, I love the design. FIB, so just formation into the boundary, into the short side. We've got three eligibles, and essentially this is a nub formation. This is just a tight end standing up. Now he's going to take the edge off, flipper the defensive end, and then run that shallow. And we're going to pair that with what is essentially three picks. Now whether you call this a pivot, a sit, kind of an out that turns in here, it doesn't really matter. Post, it ends up being a post wheel. I think the number one has the post. The number two has the wheel. So this idea being that we're going to clear this area out. And then we're going to have this shallow come underneath it. And whether you're supposed to get it to the back first or the back operates the same way. But it gives you opportunities and it floods an area. Gives you good man beaters. Gives you some zone beaters. It's not just go sit, go sit there and turn around like spacey. We got runaway opportunities. We give him a good throw. He's able to fall into the end zone. This is how you get seven points. Well done from the pocket. Excellent job, Justin Herbert, Chargers offense. Let's go. Next one, third and five. Another absolute brutal play here. Now, this one really hurts. Keenan Allen down here to the bottom, then number two. Wide ass open. Sky mail. I mean, let it sink in. This is a brutal miss. This ball just comes out flat from the top. It's there. Great design, great call. High back five. That is brutal. Now make it even worse. Look up top to the number two, the new number two. Both sides touchdowns. Golly. Wow. This is a brutal, brutal four-point miss. And this is how you lose games. I don't care what the comeback looks like. You lose, you leave points out there like this. You can't take advantage of these types of miscommunications defensively. And you're going to have all sorts of issues. They can't get aligned. Damn. These are brutal misses. So come up here. They can't get aligned. Pipe. Up here, a little nod. Both of these are touchdowns. They get all confused about who's who in the zoo, who's got the under, what they're going to do with these underneath defenders, where the safety's at. And someone pops. And we don't even give them a chance. This is a brutal four-point miss. And again, I keep saying four-point miss because when you lose a close game, these four points matter. These four points matter in the playoffs. And the, it almost looks like he like sidearms it. You know, it just is. It, it's a it's a bizarre miss, man. It's not even close for a guy as talented as he is throwing the ball to have that as the output. Damn. And then the last one here, third and three from just outside the red area. But again, another four-point miss. This one's a bummer on a number of levels. Even if they would get it here at the end, it would be a holding. Looks like, to me, this is a combination of systemic failure, offensive design failure, and Herbert failure. There's no reason to bail here. Yeah, there's a, a runner in the A-gap, but you got to trust your back to block this guy. You can't bail like that. There is... You just can't do that. That's something that NFL quarterbacks get comfortable with double mug really quickly. But when I talk about systemic failure as well or offensive system failure, to me here, this looks like just shallow cross. Okay, some iteration of that. It's usually going to be paired with a corner or seven stop and a post. Okay, But the bones of this are right here, the shallow and the deep hook. Now, this right here, this shallow, ends up colliding with this looks like the nickel player who's blitzing. He's blitzing. And so they run into each other. So you get a little fortunate right here. He's bailing, but he's technically hot down here. This is two on the back. So if the offensive line is going to this player right here, so these three are going to these three, well, then the back is almost guaranteed going dual one where he blocks there, to two, the nickel or the star off the edge. So they get lucky here. This is the, the crazy part for the Chargers. They are fortunate that they get a collision here. Two trains running into each other in the night. Boom. But even if that was the case, Herbert doesn't look over there and see that. That's not why he's bailing. He's bailing because he feels this A-gap pressure, it looks like. But, and, so if we were hot, let's play this thing out like we really are hot. Where's the ball supposed to go? To the shallow? You can't go to the shallow because you got somebody dropping off over here. The design here doesn't give you a hot answer. So it can be a combination of bad quarterback play, bad design. Again, look, look, look at the collision down here at the bottom. That's fortunate. 
Watch it. He gets up and keeps blitzing. We're not hot. I mean, we're hot, but it doesn't play itself out like we're hot. But even if we were hot, where do you want the ball to go? My thing about it is Herbert should stand in there, trust his protection, at least the back-wise. He's not looking to the left to know that he's hot. I mean, right? He, that, that's not a blitz. That just looks like a, a nickel colliding with Keenan Allen, Keenan Allen like, a, like jacking him at the line of scrimmage. Boom! You don't know that that's pressure. He should be staying, hanging in the pocket and throwing the deep hook. I mean, there's no other real good opportunity for where the ball to go. You know, maybe a contested seven stop. But this is this is bad ball, man. This is third in the season. Third in the season? We're bailing. We're getting fortunate. We don't have the pass protection secure. It's just this is how people get fired. And I get it. It's already happened. But this is a this is a bad look. And they've been bad looks on these third downs for four points. And these are crucial downs. Damn. So that is a wrap. Justin Herbert, some tough, really the Chargers offense, some tough execution errors on what I'm used to calling third downs for four points. These are the most critical downs, in my opinion, in a game. Usually these things decide close games, and it certainly did here. Now, this thing obviously got tilted in a bunch of different directions, and it all had all sorts of momentum things. But just looking at it from this one specific lens, these critical third downs that really either lead to touchdowns or lead to field goals end up really costing you if you can't convert. And so for me, it's always fascinating to look at the combination of scheme, systematic choices, design, and execution, whether they be execution at a high level or execution errors, pass protection errors, reads, what we're trying to do, where we're trying to attack a defense, all those things layered together really put the Chargers and Justin Herbert in a tough situation to win this game. Even with a big lead, the execution when it mattered most just was lacking. And I think this video showed four examples of where that was and where really they did it once at a really high level on really probably the harder of all four of the third downs, being able to get that shallow coming across for a touchdown, but the rest of them, my goodness, there were critical, critical errors, whether it be design or execution. So thank you so much for hanging to the end. I will see you next time. Have a good one.